This is the Quibuka Podcast presented by the National Commission for the Fight Against Genocide, CNLG. Thank you for joining us as we embark on this deeply impactful journey. Through years of research, Dr. Bizimana, the Executive Secretary of CNLG, collected in-depth accounts of what took place in the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. This is the first podcast of its kind. Dr. Bizimana takes us through each of the 100 days. Days that resulted in the death of over 1 million people. As Rwanda remembers, unite and renews, the Quibuka podcast is a reminder that each life lost must be counted and every memory honored. This is a warning. This podcast contains depictions of violence. If you like the podcast and want to help spread these important stories, please leave a review and share Quibuka podcast with others who'd be interested in listening. You can also visit our website at www.quibuka.rw for even more information on how you can join Rwanda as we commemorate the genocide against the Tutsi for the 27th year. On today's episode of the Quibuka podcast, we are taken through the first days of the genocide against the Tutsi. With the announcement of the death of President Juvenile Habyarimana, the apocalypse that Colonel Bagosola had openly announced a few days before begins. <laughs> Implementation of the genocide against the Tutsi across the country. April 7th, 1994. The beginning of the genocide across the country is proof that the Rwandan government had planned the extermination of Tutsis. Soldiers of the Presidential Guard were at the forefront of extermination of Tutsis residing in the city of Kigali. On the night of April 6th to 7th, 1994, after President Habyarimana's Falcon 50 was shot down in Erangwe militia, and members of the Presidential Guard placed numerous roadblocks across the city and began to kill Tutsis. The Ineramge and members of the Presidential Guard intended in particular to exterminate the Tutsi who had taken refuge at the Amaro Stadium in Remera, where Unamil soldiers had taken up positions. This plan was thwarted by fighting by the RPF Ingotani troops against members of the Presidential Guard, which served many Tutsis and other members of the population who had taken refuge at Amaholo Stadium. Among those who had taken refuge there who was served by RPF Ingotani is a Belgian, François Verité, who was a consultant in the field of governance, responsible for the supervision of various projects in Rwanda funded by the United Nations Development Programme, UNDP. On the same date, Major Alois Nabakuze, commander of the Parakomando Battalion, which was installed at the Kanombe military camp, ordered members of the battalion to kill the Tutsi and members of the opposition who lived nearby the military camp in a place called Kajagari. On the same date, nearly 17 Tutsis who are religious were killed at Saint Christus, a Jesuit center in Remera. Among those who were killed was a Jesuit priest, Chrysolog Mahame, age 67, who was the director of the center and among the founders of the Association of Volunteers for Peace, AVP, dedicated to defending human rights and promotion of peace, they were killed by members of the Presidential Guard and the Kanombe Parakomando Battalion in collaboration with Inhera Hamge. Assassination of politicians opposed to the genocide plot. Within the framework of purging, politicians who are opposed to the Habyarimana government and who are opposed to the execution of genocide, first the Prime Minister, Mrs. Uwinji Imanagata, was immediately killed, as well as the 10 soldiers of the Belgian contingent of troops from the United Nations who are responsible for our protection. They were first tortured before being executed by the Rwandan army soldiers commanded by Major Bernard Nuyahaga, who was sentenced to 20 years in prison in 2007 by a Belgian court. After serving his sentence, he was sent to Rwanda, where he currently resides. Among those who were killed was also Kavaruganda Joseph, President of the Constitutional Court, Minister Frédéric Nzamurambaho, President of PSD Party, Maître Felicien Gango, President of the PSD, and his wife Odette Bonavenshi, Faustin Richogoza, Minister of Information and a member of MDR, as well as Landwar Ndasingwa, member of PL, who was quickly assassinated by members of the Presidential Guard. Radio Muhavura of the RPF Ngotanyi was the first to denounce the massacres of Tutsi and Hutu politicians opposed to the genocide. The commander-in-chief of the RPF Ngotanyi troops declared that the RPF had the prominent duty to protect the innocent members of the population who are being killed, and he gave his instructions to stop the genocide. 
on the night of April 6, 1994, Radio Rwanda and RTLM broadcasted a press release signed by Colonel Teones Bagosoda, Director of Cabinet to the Minister of Defense, on his behalf, announcing the death of President Juvenile Habyarimana, asking the population to stay at home in order to organize the massacres of Tutsis without them being able to flee. Immediately, throughout the city of Kigali, especially in locations of Kachiru, Chimihurura, the Inheramne installed roadblocks and began to kill the Tutsis. At the same time, the massacres of Tutsis began throughout the country. The massacres were coordinated by the Burgmestre and other local authorities. The massacres immediately started in Jichie commune. In Jiseni prefecture, many Tutsis were killed, including the wife of Azivamo Christophe, then head of an agro-pastoral project in this region. In Wichumbi commune, in prefecture de Kigali, Juvenal Rugambara, Burgumestre started implementing the genocide against the Tutsi. This same Rugambara confessed before the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, ICTR, to have personally killed 100 Tutsis, and he was sentenced for the crime of genocide. On April 7, 1994, the Tutsi massacres reached Nyamata in Ujesera and Sache in Chibungo Prefecture. In the former Runda commune in Kamonyi, Jitarama Prefecture, the massacres also started on April 7, 1994. The Tutsis who resided there were killed in the localities of Biharabuje, near the Nyabarongo River, in Ruramba, in Isenga, on the bridge from Nyabarongo, in Gasharara, in Idongo, at the petrol station of Runda, at the roadblock of Vishenyi, while others were thrown into the Chabariza River. These are some of the renowned genocidaires from Runda who started genocide in the area. Kamana Claver, a construction entrepreneur, Uimana Peraje, a teacher, Dambaje Sixbat, the former burgmestre of Runda. On the same day, in the former Kenzi commune in Jitarama, Tutsis were massacred in Chochobeka and in Nwari near Nyabarongo River, currently in Kamonyi district. In Jisuma commune, in Tiangu prefecture, the gendarmes began to kill the Tutsis just as in Ruramba, in Nyaruguru, in Jikongoro Prefecture. In Muko Commune, in Jikongoro Prefecture, currently in Yamagabe District, nearly 100 killers, led by the chief of the communal police and the mayor, Kaihura Albert, killed seven Tutsis who had taken refuge in the parish of Mushubi, among them the accountant of the commune, Michel Gachenderi, and his family. In the city of Giseni, Colonel Anatol Nsenjumva, who commanded the Giseni military camp, immediately organized a meeting attended by Inher Hamne, Imuza Migambi, soldiers and gendarmes. In the city of Giseni, Colonel Anatol Nsenjumva, who commanded Giseni military camp, immediately organized a meeting which was attended by Inher Hamne, Imuza Migambi, soldiers and gendarmes. During that meeting, it was decided to raise roadblocks everywhere in town and start killing all Tutsis. Most of the Tutsis were killed in their homes, and vehicles transported the bodies of the victims to be thrown in graves dug for this purpose in a cemetery of Giseni, which by now was renamed by the killers Commune Rouge. At Nyundo, the massacres began immediately and continued for the next few days. More than 800 Tutsis, including many women, and children had taken refuge at the Catholic parish of Nyundo and were almost all massacred. These massacres were planned and coordinated by Colonel Anatol Nsenjumva. On the evening of April 7, 1994, nearly 50 Tutsis were also killed at the Catholic Minor Seminary of Nyundo, while some 150 others were massacred in the Catholic parish of Usasamana, Nyundo Diocese. Also on the same day, in Kabasheja, Currently in Rujero sector in Jiseni, Tutsis who had been brought from Rubavu commune by Inheramne were killed, while others were killed in the center of Saint Pierre in a house in the bishopric, in the old building of Randex Giseni, at the church of Stella Maris Parish, and in the area called Commune Rouge in the city of Giseni. Massacres also took place in Mutura and Rugerere region, in Mudende and in Bigogwe region, where the Tutsis were killed by soldiers from Bigogwe military camp commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Alphonse Nzunjize. The extermination of Tutsis was initiated in Mchingo commune after meeting chaired by Nzirure Joseph, an MRND general secretary. On April 7, 1994, a meeting was chaired by Nzirure Joseph, who was the secretary general of MRND. In the same meeting was Colonel Ephraim Setako, Haririmana Emmanuel, 
Burgumestre of Mutingo Commune, Colonel Augustin Vizimungu, Kazmir Vizimungu, Jean-Baptiste Nyabusore, Estras Baheza, Jonathan Bambonye, Jean Damasen Nyoyita, Dominique Gatsimbanyi, the Burgumestre of Commune Nguri, Asiel Ndisetse and Lazaren Danjiza were all in attendance. The Inerem stayed outside awaiting the decision that would be made. It was decided to start the massacres of the Tutsi, to distribute weapons to the population and to install roadblocks in various places. Colonel Vizimungu was appointed to implement the decision taken. After the meeting, he distributed weapons to the population and to the leaders of Inerami, including Burgmester Juvenal Kajerijeri, Baheza Esidras, a businessman from Byangawo. All the Tutsis who had taken refuge at the Higher Institute of Agriculture and Livestock, Isaibu Sogo, who were killed while police and Inherahamge killed some 43 others who had taken refuge in the Catholic parish of Busogo. On the date of April 7, 1994, around 3 p.m., all the Tutsis in the region of Busogo had been killed. So that the Inherahamge who had called themselves Amahindure, a group of killers from Muchingo commune, went to kill in other regions of Ruhenjeri prefecture. It was in this context that they went to kill Tutsis who had taken refuge at the Court of Appeal in the town of Ruhenjeri, as well as in Nyabihu, Musumba, Nguri, and Nyachinama. Tutsis who had taken refuge in Bugarama, in Changu Prefecture, currently in Yusis District, after having been chased, were removed from their homes to be killed and thrown into Rusizi, Ruwa, and Rubjiro rivers. These massacres were organized by Yusuf Munyakazi, and the director of Semerga factory, Marcel Sebatkwari, who fled to Belgium, from which country he received naturalized citizenship. Tutsis were also killed in Yikundamvura, Hinduka, in Changu prefecture, in Rusizi district, in the center of Chivuruga, in Gachenye district, at Musasa commune office, in the former Chigaringari prefecture and its surroundings, in Muhondo, in Gachenye district, at the Tari commune office in Chigaringari, at Nemba hospital, and in the center of Gachenye. On the same day, Tutsis were also killed in Kananida, in Hungu region, Changugu. There were also Tutsis who had taken refuge in the Adventist Church of Hesha, currently in Mukamira sector, after being brought from Nanga sector in Rohenjeri prefecture, currently in Nyabihu district, like other Tutsis who had taken refuge at the Adventist Church of Jisizi in Muringa sector, Nyabihu district, other Tutsis had been arrested and brought at the military camp of Mukamira, just like those who had taken refuge in the church of Rambura, in Rambura sector, Jiseni prefecture, and the Tutsis who had taken refuge at Bjahi sector in Jiseni prefecture, currently in Ruavu district. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of Kwibuka Podcast. As always, make sure you leave us a review, sharing what you like about the podcast, and share with others who would be interested in listening.